Hello, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I believe it's afternoon for most of us, or good morning to you if it's morning in your country. Uh, welcome to financing your studies as international student at community colleges webinar. Uh, I'm Yulia, I'm going to be moderating today. And before I introduce uh, our speakers, I will remind you that this session will last about 30 minutes. And in the end, you will have a chance to ask your questions. So you can type your questions in the chat box or in the Q&A box or as we go, or you can leave them in the very end and we would be happy to address your questions. So you will learn about financing your studies at a community college from representatives of three different community colleges. This is Rachel Williams from Bluegrass Community and Technical College, Rachel Good from Olympic College and Katie Wan Wook from Tacoma Community College. Katie, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. Um, we'll watch the chat as we go to see if we can answer your questions um, or we'll wait until the end if they're not specifically relevant. So we're going to start this off with costs to attend a U.S. community college. And I just want to introduce my institution first. You can go next slide. So my name is Katie and I'm with Tacoma Community College. And so we are in the city of Tacoma. It's the second largest city in Western Washington. Um, that's Northwest USA, not Washington DC. Um, so we offer the two plus two bachelor's degree like all of the community colleges here today where you start your degree for the first two years and then continue on to university. Um, and we have about 200 international students with a total cost of attendance under $20,000. So just a brief overview of who we are. Um, next slide. Um, so to talk about cost of attendance, I already saw a question in the chat. Is college and university in the United States free? And unfortunately for Americans and international students alike, it is not free. Um, it does come at a cost. There are ways to reduce your costs, though, and that's what we want to talk about today. So when you plan to come to the United States, one of the most important things that you can do is to create your budget. So talking to your family, to your, your sponsor, looking at your own finances and deciding how much money do I have to spend on my U.S. education? Um, and with that in mind, you should look at the cost to attend different types of institutions in the US. So community college is a great way to reduce that cost. On the slide here, I have four kind of big buckets of institutional types. So there are community colleges, these are public two-year institutions. Um, liberal arts colleges tend to be smaller um, not doing as much research, but also fairly affordable. Um, then you kind of have your big public state schools. Um, in the state of Washington, where I am, that's the University of Washington, Washington State. Those are the big institutions that each um, of the 50 states has. And then there are private universities. Um, and so if you just go on a university or college's website, and check out what their annual international student tuition fees are, you'll find that community colleges tend to be around that nine to $10,000 range. Liberal arts colleges looking at maybe 18, public research around 37 average and private universities sticker price of 57. So before we talk about scholarships and discounts and all of that, just looking at overall cost, you can see that choosing to start your studies at a community college is already significantly more affordable than many other institutional types. Okay, next slide. So starting at a community college, um, I like to remind everyone is like receiving a $40,000 scholarship. That's a big number. So here's how. Next slide. So over the course of four years, that's how long it takes to study a US bachelor's degree, typically four to five. You attend a public university for all four years. Let's say their average tuition is about 37. That means you're looking at $148,000 over four years. Um, it's quite a bit of money, um, 
But if you look at the community college pathway, where you spend the first two years at community college with that much lower tuition rate, and then you pay that 37,000 at public university for year three and four when you transfer, you're looking at a difference in price of, in this case, over 50,000 US dollars. To get this price, there's no minimum GPA or grades that you need. There's no SAT or ACT requirement. In fact, most community colleges don't even have a TOEFL or IELTS requirement. And there's no application for this, this discount needed. There's no additional essay, no additional work. This is simply by choosing a community college first, you can save this much money. Uh, next slide. Um, oops. Thank you. Um, but then often students talk about scholarships and many universities in the US offer first year and transfer scholarships. So if you apply to a university in the US and they offer you say a $10,000 scholarship, that's a big amount of money. For a public institution that brings your cost down to about 27 for the year. This again is just tuition. Um, so after four years, you'd pay about 108. That's much better than the last slide that said 148. However, if you do that community college pathway again, and you even pay full price at the university, your still overall cost for four years is cheaper. So the point of this is that attending a community college first and receiving no scholarship is still a more affordable pathway for your four-year degree than receiving a four-year scholarship to most universities. And so again, community college is a very smart and easy way for you to reduce your overall tuition costs. Now getting it for free is likely um, not possible, but with a proper budget and planning, you can definitely make it happen with a CC first. Okay, next slide. Um, the other part of a budget that I want to acknowledge is that the last few slides I've mentioned mostly related to tuition. And while tuition is a really important part of your studies, it's also important to consider where you'll live and what you'll eat. So about 30% of your budget should go to housing. Um, and community colleges can be a great way to help with this area as well. So community colleges are community-based. They tend to work very closely with their local city. And so in many community colleges, Tacoma, for example, we offer a homestay placement. It's much more affordable to live with a local family where they provide you your meals um, than to live in on-campus living or often even rent an apartment. Um, there's often no on-campus living requirement. Many universities require you to live on campus year one and two. A community college, you have options, so you can find more reduced housing costs. And community colleges often can have public transportation discounts to help you get around the city. Um, other ways that you can save on housing would be through shared apartments and choosing a small to mid-sized city. I talk a lot about Tacoma being a baby Seattle. We're very close to Seattle, but we're much more affordable. So looking into smaller mid-sized cities is a great way to save money. So passing it on to my colleagues next to continue the conversation. Perfect, thank you, Katie. Um, so now that Katie has introduced the um, average costs of attending a US community college. Um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about opportunities to make your education more affordable during the time that you're in the US. Next slide, please. So my name is Rachel Good. I'm the Assistant Director of International Education and Study Abroad at Olympic College. Um, like Tacoma Community College, Olympic College is also like located in the state of Washington. We are in a city called Bremerton, which is right across the Puget Sound from Seattle. So again, close to Seattle, and um, we have over 70 different associate degree programs um, and guaranteed uh, transfer into um, about 20 different partner universities. So um, we have an excellent uh, programming for international students and our students get to transfer to, to really great universities across the US. Next slide, please. 
So today I'm going to be talking about three different ways to make college more affordable during the time that you're in the United States. There's a few different ways that you can do this. One is through scholarships. Um, so, you know, scholarships are going to vary based on institution. I'm going to talk about some of the scholarships today that are available at Olympic College, but it's going to be important when you're talking to the representative at the college you're interested in, um, ask them about scholarship op opportunities because they do vary based on institution. Um, I will tell you a little bit today about scholarships that are available to students at Olympic College. Um, I'm also going to be talking about on-campus employment opportunities. Um, international students can work on campus uh, part-time, typically. Um, again, this varies a little bit by institution, but um, most institutions do have uh, part-time jobs available for students. That's a great way to earn a little bit of extra money, um, you know, for your tuition and living expenses during the time that you're studying in the United States. Um, and another option to consider is outside funding. So, you know, there are scholarships, grants, loans available to international students as you're looking at your options to go and study in the United States. Um, and Education USA is going to be a really great resource for you um, to let you know about opportunities that are available in your country. So I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about each of these opportunities now. Next slide, please. So just to give you an example of some of the scholarships available at Olympic College, we have scholarships available for our current students. So that means that when you're first applying to Olympic College, there's not going to be an opportunity to apply for scholarships. Um, you'll have to apply, you'll be accepted, you'll come to Olympic College, you'll begin your studies, and during your first quarter of your studies, you can apply to scholarships through um, here at Olympic College. It's called the Olympic College Foundation. Other schools, um, you know, might have their own uh, organizations that that or that um, manage their scholarships. Um, this page here is just an example of some of the scholarships we have available. Uh, we have about 250 different scholarships available for students, um, and the average award that students get is about $2,200 USD. So, um, you know, scholarships are, are competitive. You would apply, you know, you would write an essay and, and submit your transcript, uh, your academic record, and you know, kind of explain why, you know, why you might deserve this scholarship, why you're a great candidate for this scholarship. Um, there's ones for students in particular programs of study, for example, students studying in the nursing program or students involved on a sports team like the basketball team or the track and field team. So there's a lot of different scholarships available based on your own individual background. We do have um, workshops available for students. You know, usually the school will, um, you know, help you as an international student about how to apply for a scholarship, how to have a competitive application, how to write a great essay to tell your story and explain why you, you deserve a scholarship um, at that institution. Next slide, please. Another option is on-campus employment opportunities. Um, just to give you an example, at Olympic College, um, students can apply for an on-campus job um, working up to 18 hours per week. The salary for student employees um, in the state of Washington is $13.69 per hour. Uh, so that can you know, give you an opportunity to earn some extra, extra money while you're here on campus. Um, if you find a job, you know, we have an online database of jobs that are available to students. You find a job you're interested in, you can apply for it. And then the international office will help you to, um, you know, apply for a social security number, which will authorize you to work legally in the United States. Again, these are jobs through Olympic College or through the institution that you are attending. And, um, you know, they're on the campus. So you wouldn't, you know, necessarily be able to go off campus and apply for any job, but on the campus, you, you can apply for jobs. Um, we have jobs, for example, available in our um, campus bookstore, IT department, child care center, in our international office. There's lots of great things available for students. Next slide, please. And again, um, so this option for outside funding, um, loans would be uh, money that you borrow from maybe a company or a family, a friend, a sponsor that you would ultimately pay back after you complete your education. Grants are usually government provided. That's money that you wouldn't need to pay back. 
uh, scholarships are usually provided by a private company or maybe a nonprofit organization also would not need to be repaid at the end of your education. Um, again, these opportunities are going to vary a lot by the country that you're in. So I would recommend re uh, reaching out to your local education USA office about loans, grants, scholarships that might be available um, in your home country. All right, so thank you so much. I will um, now pass this on to my colleague, Rachel, who will continue this conversation. Great, thank you. So my name is also Rachel, um, and I actually represent University of Kentucky. We are the transfer partner for Bluegrass Community and Technical College in Lexington, Kentucky. And so I can talk a lot about um, the second step for students who start and do their first two years at a community college. What comes after when you're looking to complete those next two years? So Bluegrass Community and Technical College and University of Kentucky are both located in Lexington, Kentucky, which is in the southeastern part of the United States. And their campuses are actually right next to each other. So if you go to Bluegrass Community College, you become very familiar with the University of Kentucky's campus because housing for students, if you do choose to live in a residence hall, is actually on the University of Kentucky campus. So there's a lot of interaction between the two campuses, even during your first two years when you are a student at Bluegrass Community and Technical College. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You're a student in the two-year school, but you're also getting the experience of being at a large state university without the tuition prices. So there are many programs of study at Bluegrass Community College. And in the programs of study, there are over 30 degree pathways to continue your studies seamlessly at University of Kentucky. And today, I am actually going to be talking about funding the last two years of your undergraduate. What kind of funding opportunities you should be looking for when you finish up those two years at the community college um, and you are then going to um, look for, for opportunities at four year schools to finish those last two years. So as my colleagues told you about in a lot of detail, there are a lot of really serious financial advantages for doing your first two years at a community college in terms of the savings that you'll get. But then you have to think about, well, okay, how am I going to finance these last two years? And I'm going to talk about kind of two types of scholarship opportunities that you should be on the lookout for. Um, when you are looking to finance those second two years at a four-year university. First of all, most of the scholarships I'm talking about are merit-based aid, meaning that these are based on your grades. So your first two-year grades, the grades you get during your two years at the community college are very, very important. These are what's really going to identify you as being a strong academic candidate who deserves financial aid um, for your last two years. So what you are going to be looking to identify as an international transfer student are transfer scholarships. So transfer scholarships are available to all students, international and domestic, um, no matter what institution that you transfer from. So these are available to all transfer students. And this is one of the main types of scholarships that you will see advertised as a student going from a community college to a four-year school. Now, um, those are general transfer scholarships. In addition to general transfer scholarships, you should also be looking for pathway partner scholarships. So just like Bluegrass Community and Technical College and University of Kentucky are um, transfer partners, every two-year school is going to have a list of schools who are their transfer partners. And very often, these transfer partners will have scholarships specifically for students transferring from their partner community colleges. For example, at University of Kentucky, in addition to our general transfer scholarships, we also have a pathway scholarship specifically for students transferring from Bluegrass Community and Technical College into University of Kentucky. And these are really great scholarships to look for because often they are designed specifically to cover the difference in tuition 
between the community college and the four-year institution. So University of Kentucky, for example, has this scholarship that is designed specifically to make up the difference in tuition between going from Bluegrass to going to University of Kentucky. And many different institutions will have something similar. So that's one of the advantages of looking first at the pathway um, and partner institutions with the community college that you went to. So these are the scholarship opportunities that are specific to transfer students. In addition to scholarships that are specific for transfer students, you also want to look at scholarships available to all international students. And I just gave two examples of the kinds of scholarships you might be looking for. These differ very, very much depending on what university or college you're looking at. They differ in nature, sometimes they're called different names, but this is a general type of scholarship. So for one, there are diversity scholarships. So American colleges and universities really want to have a diverse campus with students from a variety of backgrounds and ethnicities and national origin. And to promote this, there are often, not always, but there are often diversity scholarships. So this is one type of scholarship that you should look out for. Another type of scholarship that you should be on the watch for are ambassador program scholarships. So ambassador program scholarships are scholarships um, that where you are an international ambassador for the university. So you might talk to prospective students from your home country um, or participate in some way like that as part of this scholarship program. So these are kind of common opportunities that are open to international students beyond the transfer scholarships. Diversity scholarships and ambassador program scholarships are usually open to both um, transfer students and to incoming first year international students. So these are not specific to transfers, but these are certainly opportunities that you should be on the lookout for. These kind of scholarships are more likely to require separate application materials. So you need to be prepared to write an essay, um, to do an interview maybe, or something like that. So you should be prepared to go beyond your application materials um, if you are applying for scholarships and any kind of funding at four-year American universities. So how do you find out about these opportunities? Whoops. So the first person, the person you should really be in contact with first is your transfer advisor at your two-year institution. Any two-year institution you are at, you are going to have transfer advisors whose job is to help you with the process of going from finishing your two-year degree to figuring out where you want to finish the rest of your two-year of, of your four-year degree for your last two years. That person is going to be an invaluable resource about the kinds of scholarships you should be looking for and you should be able to find, especially at um, four-year universities that have pathways and official agreements with your two-year college. Also doing your own research online in colleges and universities you're interested in and reaching out to talk to international admissions at four-year institutions excuse me, is something that you should definitely do. I talk to students from Blue, um, international students from Bluegrass Community and Technical College all the time. They reach out to me with emails. We all have a Zoom discussion maybe, and they want to know about the process of applying for some of these scholarships at University of Kentucky when they are ready to transfer. So someone from a four-year institution is also always going to be happy to talk to you about the kinds of opportunities for financial um, help that are open to you. And my last piece of advice, this is my most important piece of advice, all throughout the process of your applications and um, applying for scholarships and applying for admissions is stay organized. Do not miss important deadlines. Very often scholarship deadlines are different than admission deadlines. They're usually earlier because scholarships are, are more competitive. 
The worst thing is when I have to tell a student who's an amazing student and who's really excellent and deserving, well, I'm sorry, you can't even apply for the scholarship right now because you missed the deadline. And we aren't considering anyone else because we have so many applications. So staying organized is one of the most important things you could do in your search when you're searching for that two-year institution, when you're searching for that four-year institution to finish your degree, and when you're searching for a scholarship. So this is what's really going to allow you to maximize all of your opportunities. Um, and so that's it for me. And uh, I think we probably have time for questions. Great. Yes. Thank you so much for, for the presentation and for the, for the advice. We do have quite a few questions. We'll try to address as many as we can. There is a quite specific question from uh, Tamo uh, from Georgia, as I understand. Um, so the question is, uh, is it possible for me uh, to do mobility from the Georgian Technical College to American Community College? And what will I need for this? If anybody can take that. So I can speak kind of generally about transfer admissions from international universities to, I, to a two-year school. So what you might need to do is you might need to get your credentials evaluated. Um, if this is a school that admissions with a certain community college are unfamiliar with, they might ask you to do is something that you unfortunately have to pay for, but to get your credentials evaluated. Um, and this will let them know exactly what kind of classes that you took. Right, so this will let them know if there are any classes that you took um, will apply towards your degree at the community college. So that's something that's usually pretty specific to the school that you're applying for and what they require and the school that you're coming from. If you're coming from a school where they've had students before, the process might be a little bit easier. Um, but I don't know if Katie or Rachel could speak to that more specifically. Yeah, I think it really depends on how much schooling you've already done. So a community college is able to offer that year one and two of a bachelor's degree. So if you've completed a lot of those courses already, then we would talk to you about, you know, the, the general education classes for a bachelor's degree in the US and possibly recommend that you transfer to a university instead, depending on what classes you've taken because we wouldn't want you to redo a lot of your education, but instead get credit for that um, and the courses you've already taken. So it would, it would depend on your situation, but happy to take a look at that for you. Thank you. And uh, lots of similar questions in the key as uh, whether it is possible to receive a fully funded scholarship at a community college. Yeah, so the, the, that's a great question. Um, the scholarships that I mentioned that we're able to offer to current students at Olympic College are partial scholarships. Um, at U.S. community colleges, um, you know, as we mentioned previously, because the costs are so much lower than university costs, um, unfortunately, it's... I don't know of any opportunities for fully funded scholarships at US community colleges. Um, again, you know, there's, there's outside loans, grants, scholarships available um, that you, you know, you can definitely look into and, and Education USA can help with that. Um, but the, the scholarships that we offer at Olympic College are partial scholarships. So you'll most likely get um, a percentage of your, of your tuition funded, but you would still have to pay, um, you know, some costs out of pocket. Yes. Yeah, and related to, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say that's the same at Tacoma Community College. While we would love to support you fully, we unfortunately do not have full tuition scholarships, just partial funding um, and different awards that help support your education, but wouldn't cover the cost fully. Thank you. And related to scholarship, um, there it seems to be a popular question, what does admission uh, look for? Uh, in international students' profile to grant the scholarship? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, there's a lot of different scholarships available. Um, you know, again, I'm, I'm speaking for Olympic College. It varies based on institution, but we have over 250 different scholarships available. And so, um, you know, students are able to look through a list of all the scholarships that we have and see what they might qualify for. So for example, some scholarships are specifically for students who are studying, um, you know, a certain program, say it's a student studying computer science or 
a student who is involved in, you know, community volunteer activities. Normally scholarships are, um, you know, looking for students who have specific qualities. A lot of times it's based on GPA. So maybe you need to have at least a 3.0 or a 3.5 GPA. So you'll be able to look through all of the scholarships that are available and see what you might qualify for. And then you'll write an essay and explain why you are qualified for that scholarship. Um, it's competitive. So you know, you'll be competing against other students to get that scholarship. And um, you know, the, the um, advisors will read it over and um, you know, award scholarships based on your qualifications. Thank you. And also there is a question, does the university help in passing the diploma practice, I guess it's OPT, and finding a job after graduation? Yes, definitely. Most community colleges, just like universities, have like a career center. So these are spaces that support you in building your resume and preparing for an interview for a job in the United States. Um, they also help connect community colleges. That word community is really important to us. It means that we're connected to the local city and, and local organizations and also businesses. And so the Career Center at, at Tacoma Community College and, and other community colleges would be able to support you in, in looking for jobs you're qualified for and preparing your application materials to be competitive. Um, and I know, I'm sure Rachel can speak the same at Kentucky. Um, universities are gonna be able to do the same when you continue on for that bachelor's degree. Yeah, absolutely. Most universities have an international center or something that's the equivalent of that under a different name. They are really the experts. They can help you with all things OPT. Um, and like my colleagues mentioned, universities have career centers. There are usually even career centers specific for specific majors. So the College of Business will have career services. The College of Engineering will have career services. And very often there are career fairs that come right to campus. So there are a lot of opportunities to really um, network in that way without even leaving campus. Thank you. So it seems like uh, we are running out of time, but there's one question that repeats a lot. So I'm going to ask it um, whether you can defer admission at a community college. I think it might be related to the pandemic. Yes, definitely. Um, yes, definitely. you know, I think, <laughs> yeah, um, I think the individual policies will vary a little bit by institution, but the, you know, across the board, I think absolutely, you know, we totally understand, especially given the, the pandemic, um, you know, situations have changed a lot, financial situations, family situations, um, you know, I think we're, all of the institutions that you'll be looking at are very, very willing to work with you and, and defer your, your admission and help you with the process of, um, you know, submit, getting your I-20 ready and getting you ready for your US um, F-1 visa interview, everything along those lines. So yes, you can definitely defer your admission. Thank you. So um, as I said, we are about to wrap up, but we still have questions. Uh, good news for the participants who still have questions that Rachel, Rachel, and Katie are still available uh, at their college booths at the FAIR platform. So uh, make sure to address those questions to them uh, and attend and visit their booth. Also, you can uh, travel a lot around the platform and uh, study more information. So uh, let's use the last minutes to, um, to say maybe uh, last uh, keywords or key advice to our uh, participants. Um, I think that my key advice would be something that I already said, but I do think that bears repeating to really to do your research and to stay organized. This is how you're going to maximize all your opportunities, how you're going to find out what works best for you and what part of the country you come to, what you're looking for in a university, and how you're really going to keep track of all of the deadlines, because I think that that's one thing that students can get really overwhelmed with is these deadlines. So stay organized. Don't miss deadlines for admission, and especially don't miss deadlines to apply for scholarships and definitely be aware that those deadlines are different sometimes. That's my big piece of advice. Thank you. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, totally agree with that. And, and along the same lines of staying organized, you know, talk to your family and try to understand what, what budget you have for your education. And you can, you know, reach out to the college and university representatives and have conversations about, um, you know, what, what your budget looks like and how you can organize that to maximize your opportunities for education in the U.S. Um, I think all all college representatives are more than willing and, and eager to talk to you, you know, both at this fair and, you know, separately over email, Zoom. Um, so, you know, we're all really happy to talk to you and answer any questions that you might have. And yeah, just, just be proactive and do research and ask questions and um, try to make sure that you're in a great position to, to pursue your education. Yeah, we can repeat it all. I would say that community colleges can offer you a lot of flexibility. So we're, we can be more affordable and we also can make sure that, that you're able to have um, just an education that fits you. I think that's the biggest benefit of choosing a community college. And so please let us know what your budget is and we'll, we'll help you um, learn a little bit more about how to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation and sharing this useful information. And thanks to everyone who's joined us. Um, have a productive day.